what's up everybody this is a rainy saturday afternoon which is the perfect weather for some tvz action uh, we have truly been blessed these last couple days with a lot of great matchups and we are just uh, continuing it along now with uh Another TVZ. Once again, it is the only Terran in the Bubbly Frog SC2 League. In the teal, in the bottom right, it's Bee Breed. And one of many Zergs it is. Spawning in the top left, in the red, Mr. Yellow Jello. And we don't really get to see a whole lot of this man here uh, he he does have a lot of excuses he can't play on a, a weeknight he he's got dates with his secret white girlfriend he's got rangers games to watch he's got furniture to move appliances to install you know a whole bunch of excuses but here we are we do have him for a best of five hopefully it goes the distance and we don't see a bop in either direction let's see what this man uh can do we've seen b breed in the tvz's yesterday and he looks pretty good in this matchup even going toe to toe with kevin lee the second best zerg in the bubbly frog se2 league Yellow Jello, I, I would have to say he's a little bit below the other Zergs. He has great fundamentals. His builds are typically pretty crisp. He does a good job droning, uh, spending his money, but then it just all falls apart with his unit control. Um, decent job there, turning that drone into a spore crawler, saving it there. Um, but... He does... Oh! Another spore crawler. Uh, but... That's not free. He does lose, like, 18 minerals or something like that. But does keep those drones alive, so that's not too shabby. Um, uh, but... As I was saying, his unit control oftentimes pretty abysmal. He'll just run his units into their deaths for no reason. Hopefully, we don't see that out of him this time around. It looks like B Breed just doing what he's been doing in this matchup for pretty much every game we've seen out of him so far. And Yellow Jello. Going for a past third hatchery, pretty standard uh, for a Zerg in this matchup. And we've got four speedlings making their way across the map, six more in production. That's a little interesting. I wonder what that's for. This Overlord has not been able to find any peace, but maybe it will now that it dies. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. I do think he should be safe over here. I'm not sure uh, why he was going down there, but one Overlord down this stage of the game is pretty unfortunate. These Lings, they're uh, working on these cooling towers, so that's going to collapse these rocks here. Or maybe he's just weakening the cooling towers so he can potentially drop them on the Terran army later. That would be a really cool move. The Lings are going to run into the front of the... Terran base, and this is what I mean. Why are you spending so much time here losing like a good, I don't know, what was that, eight or so links for zero damage? I mean, I guess that's a little bit of damage, but you know what I mean? That's unimportant. These four links just chilling outside the base, and the Hellions and a Reaper might find a lot of damage because there's not much back at home, uh, but two queens do repel them. And <laughs> Ling's kind of just running right past. Now another Hellion joins up. Five Hellions and a Reaper. 
and they are going to be able to get some drone kills over at this third base. One Hellion goes down, but that's pretty worth it, I would say. And if we take a look at the units, lost 5 drones, 11 Zerglings, 1 Overlord. So, pretty good start for the Terran player as two Widow Mines, for some reason, just walking forward. He's not going to burrow them. And Yellow Gel is going to collapse those towers. It would have been cool to see those collapse onto the Terran army, but that does not happen. Two Widow Mines do take out a queen there and honestly as a zerg i would prefer that rather than seeing them wipe out 20 lings or so and oh beep breed maybe not paying attention losing all his hellions there oh but the widow mines like i said taking out a lot of lings there and on that one and this one fired on something but didn't get any kills that's interesting um and yeah where's the stuff for Yellow Jelly, he's got 18 lings in production, but that's about it. And here comes the Terran army. We do have four queens in the front, which is helpful. Uh, but is it going to be enough? There's no transfusions going down. What are these drones doing? And oh, what a disastrous little engagement for Yellow Jello. And is this going to be it for game number one? Eight drones going down. And where's the stuff for the Zerg player? few lings just trickling in and the Terran army just pressing forward. Banelings not ready. These two might finish and maybe with the miracle connections and oh they are good. So it does clean up the Terran army for now but at what cost? 13 drones going down. This Zerg base is in shambles. Uh, but Yellow Gel's alive for now. And is Bee Breed going to continue the pressure? Uh, he is rallying forces across, but doesn't look like he really intends to continue this push. And so perhaps we can see this continue. And we do know Yellow Jello, he is very good at droning back up. Uh, he does typically know what army composition to get. I uh, would expect to see him try to go for lurkers should this game get that far, but that is quite a ways away. And Yellow Gel, despite those losses, he is back to even on workers. Uh, but it looks like Bee Breed does not want to give him a chance to get to those big scary lurkers. And here he comes with another attack. All the Widow Mines, well, no, not really. There are still three alive, but all the Zerg has gone down, and GG is going to have to be called. Bibri is going to take game numero uno. Alrighty folks, we are back. This is game number two in this best of five TVZ between the teal Terran Bee Breed and his red Zerg opponent Yellow Jello. Bee Breed with the early aggression in game number one, just able to break the back of his opponent. Bee Breed's uh, aggression is so potent in the early to mid game with his marines, hellions, widow mines, medevac attack. And we've seen so many zergs 
uh, succumb to that attack. I think, in general, uh, Zerg players typically like to go for like a heavy macro and just like thrown up. And uh, early attacks just kind of kind of throws a wrench into all their plans. And we did see that in the last game. Now, Yellow Jello, worth pointing out that he does like to be very safe. He sends out a drone just to do some scouting for proxy raxes. And, you know, that's, that's fine and all. You know, like, take a look. Uh, to see if your opponent is being cheeky, but it does cost a lot in this early game. Uh, one out of 16 workers, that's, I don't know, a significant percentage of your economy in the early game. So, um, Yellow Joe sacrificing a little bit in the early game just to be sure that he's safe. Can't really fault him too much for that, but it does hurt a bit. And the Reaper making its way across the map. We are going to see a factory follow up fast. Back in command center. And this kind of looks like a gap. Yeah, it certainly is. And B Breed is going to plug that up. So Reaper making its way into the Zerg base now. Ling's not quite ready, but luckily that Reaper was firing on the hatchery, so uh, not going to be able to get any damage done. Yellow Joe morphing that one drone into a Spore Crawler. And, oh, might lose a Ling. Oh, Ling does go down. Two Lings going down. Oh, that is no bueno. Oh, even a drone. Oh, my goodness. This has suddenly gotten real bad for the Zerg. Two Lings and a drone going down. That should never ever happen. Uh, not sure about this Overlord placement. This is kind of weird. Not sure what this one's doing either. Um, I don't know why these Zerg players put their Overlords in such weird places. And this one over here? Like, what? what are you looking for? Evolution process is finished. <laughs> we hear Yellow Gel's announcer. That is the famous White Ra. Ukrainian uh, Protoss player, actually. And yeah. B Breed just doing more of the same thing so far. And this wall is a little bit wacky. What is going on over here? Um, but yeah, just a fast triple CC, third hatchery as well for the Zerg Baneling Nest on the way. It's a little bit early, I think. Uh, but maybe just trying to be extra safe, not really sure why. Don't see any swell of lings or anything. Um, relatively fast layer as well. We are seeing a second extractor, but more drones. Uh, so maybe he just wants quicker access to uh, Hydralis Den and eventually Lurkers. A third command center is done for the Terran player. Going to be morphing that into an orbital. And of course, you don't really need to take that third base in any hurry. Uh, but the triple mules, triple SUV production is already pretty great. And once you get a couple tanks, maybe, once you feel safe enough, then you can lift that off at any time. Third hatchery, getting saturated. And we do have some queens spreading creep. It look, well, it looks like they wanted to, but uh, decided against putting down those tumors for some reason. And here comes that five hellion and a reaper hit squad from B Breed. We've seen him do this of his TVZs. And we did see that last game. It got some decent damage. I'm just going to be clearing up some creep for now. You know, Jello did invest a lot into army units, so he's going to be able to push this back fairly decently. And oh, there's Widowmine! No! 
14 kills. That is pretty brutal. And now these Banelings, no, they just gotta waddle away. Actually, getting a decent connection there. Um, so, yeah, I guess it is a hold, ultimately, but pretty costly. We do see Yellow Gel is even on workers, and that's not really what you want to see. He did also make a lot more Zerglings, which aren't really going to do anything. The aggression is over, so... Yellow Gel actually behind in workers right now, and that's not good as the Zerg. B-Breed can be floating on over to take his third base now. Uh, B-Breed's rallies, I don't know what's going on here. Why are these Marines here? These uh, units just popping out and chilling outside the barracks, having a smoke or something. Uh, Whittle Mines also likewise chilling outside the factory. Uh, we've got... Uh, 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way. That's pretty good. Uh, fairly in line, both players, actually. And then we do see that Hydralisk then in production. Do we have Baneling speed yet? Yes, we do. Uh, so that's good. Yo, Jello floating a lot of money. That's a little bit uncharacteristic of him. Maybe he's saving money for Hydralisks once the Hydra Den is done. But no, he does spend it on 24 additional Zerglings and 5 drones. And a little bit of a supply block right now. 87 out of 90. So he can produce like one Hydralisk. And this is what I mean about the... Overlords, like you should typically have one over here, and then you would spot this move out. But right now, Yellow Gel has no idea of this army moving out, and he's not gonna know until now with this creep tumor spotting that Hellion. Uh, and Yellow Gel does swarm in with his lings and does kind of catch B Breed out of position. The Widow Mines were not burrowed, so he does take out all the Widow Mines, and that is absolutely huge eliminating that splash damage uh, but I don't really think he needed to continue that attack there losing all his lings gonna lose a few queens as well and B breed somehow might be able to make this work despite losing all the widow mines over there uh, yellow gel gonna be evacuating his third base but it looks like B breed just gonna back up a little bit clean up some creep wait for reinforcements he does have a tank on the way but that's gonna give yellow gel some much needed time to get up his defenses morphing a few banelings some hydra is gonna be spawning and if only b breed knew what we knew he probably could have pressed forward and taken out this base uh, now drones that were evacuated gonna return to work there but yellow gel should see the edge of this yeah he does uh, so he does know the threat is still present Keep in mind, worker count very even, so that's typically going to favor the Terran player. And Yellow Jello just running forward, going to be taking this fight. I don't know about that. He does take out one tank, but why? The, the Terran army wasn't really pressing forward. There wasn't really a imminent threat. Uh, so kind of just throwing away a lot of units there. He does get one tank, which is okay. Uh, but we still have one back here. The bee breed spending a lot of time on creep, giving his opponent a lot of information for free. He does scan and take out some of these tumors, which is nice. And stim forward. The banelings are not quite ready. Uh, but bee breed doesn't really want to play with fire there. Doesn't know how far along they are. Decides to back up instead. Uh, where's the medevac support? A lot of these units very low on HP thanks to the stims. In fact, I think. Uh, the Terran army doing more damage to itself than the Zerg has. And I like this Yellow Jello setting up a multi pronged uh, engagement. Come in from multiple sides, but is it gonna be enough? I don't know. B Breed's army supply is pretty huge right now 82 to 56. And how are the upgrades? Uh, it's 1 1 for the Terran and 1 1 1 for the Zerg. Uh, typically, ranged attack, not the most important thing, because you really only have, what, 
four hydras there, another four hydras here. Eight hydras in total. But we do have plus two melee on the way, and if that finishes up, that could be very helpful in this upcoming fight. Because the army supply is favoring the Terran quite a lot, and Yellow Gel decides to go right now. Coming in from two angles, the Bailing's kind of crashing into tanks. That is not what you want to see. Got to micro them back to target the fleshy bio forces. Um, but might just barely be enough for a hold. Hydra's very squishy, of course, but they do a lot of DPS. Do clean up a few of the bio units, uh, but the tank and the remaining bio is able to take out the rest of the Hydra's. And now, just four marines and two marauders gonna press forward, and the Ling reinforcements aren't gonna be able to clean them up. This siege tank gonna be left for dead. So, all in all, ends up a hold for the Zerg player. However, B Breed does already have his fourth up. He's transferring some workers over there. B Breed does have the worker lead by eight. And. Looks like just gonna be more of the same for B Breed. He is getting his 2 2 upgrades. Uh, Yellow Jello does already have plus 2 melee. Plus 2 range, gonna be finishing up within the next half minute or so. But unfortunately, Carapace is quite a ways away. And ooh, there's that Lurker Den in production. Now, uh, if Yellow Jello can get up to a good number of lurkers i think he'll be in a fantastic spot because we do know b breed struggles against those uh, underground boys but yellow jello i don't know why he's pressing the issue here um but it might work out for him he's gonna get a good amount of scvs even taking out the planetary i didn't think he would be able to get that but he does get that 14 scvs going down but he is going to lose a handful of Hydras on the retreat here. And Bibri looks like he just wants to chase all the way back to the Zerg base. And Lurker Den, it is finished, but no Lurkers on the field just yet. Four trying to be morphed. Can they finish in time? Bibri once again standing in range of these Creep Tumors, but... Uh, I think his army is just a little bit too large right now. The lurkers do finish, but keep in mind they don't have the important upgrades just yet. And yeah, scan going down to spot the lurkers. They don't really have great range at the moment. And this is looking very scary now for the Zerg player. Got four. Big scary siege tanks, this third base gonna go down. Yellow Jello going for the backstab here, uh, but maybe not, decides against it. Third does go down, so I don't think you really need to take a fight anymore, just try to buy more time. Uh, but do we even have a hive? No, no hive just yet, so these lurkers not at their full ability, which is really unfortunate, I think, if they had the range upgrade they would be fairly decent uh, but this is what I mean yellow jello just kind of walking forward losing a bunch of stuff for absolutely no reason you don't need to take the fight here there's nothing to defend anymore just try to defend this space and maybe you stand a chance in this game uh, but B breed pretty content with his position right now just gonna uh, chill over here Trying to establish a stronghold position while working on his macro, re-establishing this fourth, getting a ghost academy. And just inching forward. No need to rush as the Terran player. You should feel pretty comfortable in this spot. And it's really up to the Zerg to make something happen. And I think the Terran player absolutely content with what he's gotten done so far and looks like yellow jello wants to go in right now but decides against it once again the control the indecision abysmal there crashing banelings into marauders and tanks and all that's left is a handful of hydras and a single lurker and we are going to see gg any second now there it is b breed taking a 2-0 lead
Welcome back, folks. This is game number three in this best of five series, and it's been a, a rough two games for this man in the top left. In the red, it is Yellow Jello. And his opponent taking games number one and two, it is the Teal Terran B Breed. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty decisive games, I would say, for the Terran player. Hopefully, uh, we see a little bit better play coming out of the Zerg in this game, or else we're just going to get a 3-0 bop. We do see him going for a pool first. Didn't catch the exact timing of that. I think it was 14 or so. So pretty early pool here for the Zerg player. No gases just yet, so it's just going to be slow Zerglings. Uh, but 14, if it was indeed 14, is a bit early just for safety. Uh, so it does smell like some kind of aggression, um, but early Ling aggression doesn't really work that great against Terrans. Uh, because they do typically have a wall by the time the Zerglings show up. However, the low ground buildings might help. And this Reaper is uh, going to be in production. Now, if the Reaper stays at home, it can kite the Zerglings forever. But if the Zerglings kind of just avoid it and the Reaper makes its way across the map and is out of position, these Zerglings can absolutely cause a bit of a ruckus this wall uh, being forsaken for the time being and oh Zerglings just running into the Reaper but oh yeah he does pull back and oh you had the opportunity to run in uh, but decides to not do that uh, so he's gonna get a single Zerg uh, single SCV so far and this is what I mean that Reaper can just run back shoot run back shoot run back shoot do this all days like Captain America and these Zerglings. Uh, oh, gotta be careful with that Reaper though, B Breed. And pretty good micro there. Marine coming on out as well, so B Breed gonna be absolutely fine and dandy. And in fact, all of the Zerglings gonna go down. Uh, pretty a good start for the Terran player. Four additional Zerglings not really doing a whole lot. This Reaper should be able to jump in and at least get a scout. And B Breed feeling super comfortable right now. Gonna be getting a third command center before the second is even done. And yeah, yeah, he absolutely should be. Held off that aggression with minimal losses. I think he only lost a single SCV. Um, so, yeah, should be feeling quite good. And what is Yellow Jello's follow up going to be? He has been droning. So he's up to 25 now. Looks like drone coming out to make a third base. So I'm just going to see a macro game from here, I suppose. B breed doing typically the same thing, I think. Reactor on the factory. Second barracks on the way. We do have that overlord loading on in for a scout. Marine's gonna run up to uh, put it out of its misery. Reactor is done. Double Hellion production has commenced. And Yellow Jello bit supply blocked after that scout going down. And that's just something that shouldn't really happen. Like, you know you're going to fly an Overlord in. You know you're 99% going to lose it. So you should have backup Overlords ready. Uh, two more do finish up to give him some extra supply, but... This is a slight mistake there. You do see Yellow Jello with quite a bit of money in the bank. Uh, 700 minerals. Uh, 
and should be making more queens. This hatchery not doing anything, so make a queen. Let's get more queens. Queens are so good. They're so good. One of the best units in the game. Um, blind spore crawlers out of yellow jello. I mean, why? You did scout the base no and you there. didn't see. Here. You didn't see any starport. So I don't know why you felt the need to get that. I mean, if the scout was completely denied, then yeah, maybe go for the spore crawlers, but... Two spores? That's two less drones, that's, I think, 75 minerals each. Especially given the early game, you don't really want to spend that. Uh, but we do have four creep queens right now, working on that creep. Three zerglings taking out these rocks slowly. And once again, the overlord positioning not present to spot this little seven hellion move out. Um, but I do think five queens are going to be enough. And, oh, especially with all these zerglings as well. The hellions do rotate around, and is he paying attention? Yes, he is. So we'll not let them run into the natural without a fight gonna chase a bit but good job there actually uh, disengaging once you reach the edge of the creep does lose a little bit more zerglings than I think he needed to but repels the hellions for now and despite that failed early game rush uh, yellow jello in a decent spot right now 46 workers that's not terribly much but it is more than the 38 of B breed uh, this natural base looking a bit dry, only 11 out of 16 there, uh, but we do have Hydras on the way, and back on the Terran side of things, 1-1 one, one upgrades, has landed his third base, and just go for Marines and Widow Mines, and that's a good sign for the Zerg player, because Hydras going to be better against... What? Class. Classic Seric. I don't know what he's talking about. I wasn't watching the Zerg at the moment. Um, not sure what he's talking about. What happened? Did he crash his banelings into the rocks or something? I don't know. Um, but. Yeah, uh, Hydra's a little bit better against Widow Mines than Mutalisks would be, as they do outrange the Widow Mines. But here comes Bee Breed, and I do think Yellow Jello should have enough, uh, but he's just going for it right now, and that's a little bit crazy. The Widow Mines do get decent shots, a lot of the Ling Bane is going down, and does kind of put fear into B breed for now so you're not gonna press forward but I think there was no real reason to jump on that just yet and the Queens weren't doing anything you can usually just lead the charge with the Queens they soak up a lot of fire and then of course you can transfuse them um, but it was an okay engagement after all you know, Jell's gonna finish up those rocks, so it does open up that additional avenue for the engagement. Queen's gonna try to spread some more creep over there. Got a lurker den on the way, but it's gonna be quite a ways off. And Yellow Jell just gonna look for the optimal engagement here. Oh no, half his unit's kind of running in to die once again. That infamous Yellow Jell unit control there. Uh, but he is setting up a multi-pronged engagement, and here he goes! He's just pulling the trigger. One tank not quite sieged, uh, but what? Bailing's just crashing into a tank there. Oh, no! And now Yellow Jello not looking too hot. These queens once again not participating in the fight. 
and oh, this is a little dicey. Beebring not really pressing the issue just yet, so Yellow Gel with some precious seconds. Is it going to be enough to tank inches forward? Going to be able to take out some of these active creep tumors. Uh, Banelang's going to be finishing up just in the nick of time, but they don't really get any meaningful connections. Just like my uh, online dating experience. And now we have two lurkers in production. And... Yellow Jowl still with his back up against the ropes. Are we going to see a 3-0? Oh, I hope not. I hope this goes further, but things are looking very dicey right now. And Yellow Jello once again looks like he wants to take a fight, and I don't know why he keeps doing this. You do not have to be so aggressive in the defense, uh, but he is just bleeding out units left and right supply growing in favor of the Terran player 2-2 two, two for the bow unit is going to be finishing up and that's going to make things even tougher for the Zerg only one lurker on the map right now and these queens oh they're caught out of position no transfusions on them either going to lose what was that four of them for free and that is no bueno, mucho no bueno. And Yo Jello gonna need to pull a rabbit out of a hat. He does have his hive. He does have some very important upgrades researching, but they are very far away. Once again, going for the fight does not need to do so. This lurker doesn't want to go underground. The entire Zerg army gets wiped out, and with it, Yellow Jello going to be eliminated in this best of five series. B breeds aggression just a little bit too strong as the Terran army stemming forward gonna be taking out this third base and there's nothing left. GG gets called B breed with the 3-0 domination. All right, folks, we've got some uh, bonus games. The best of five is over, but we are still playing uh, between these two guys. So I guess we're extending this to a best of seven, maybe? I don't know, uh, but we are looking at the main base of the Terran player who has won the last three games pretty convincingly, to be quite honest. It is B-Breed. And his red Zerg opponent, Yellow Jello. Pretty uh, cheeky little build last game, but unfortunately did not go his way. Uh, sometimes you do see Zergs go for like an early Ling Rush, but they run around the map. Avoid that Reaper. And then by the time they get to the Terran base, the Reaper is already somewhere over here. He's got to run all the way back and the Zerglings can find some damage. But Reaper spotted it 
right away was able to run back home and defend. And of course, Yellow Gel didn't squeeze in to the gap in the wall when he could have. And B Breed was able to plug that up. Uh, but despite that, he was able to bring it to a mid game. Uh, but once again, army control failing the Zerg. And just losing way too many units there. This time, no pool first. It's going to be a standard hatchery first. And B Breed going for the top of the ramp buildings. Whoops. But still going for a quick expansion. Reaper does finish. And going to be making its way across the map. So, pretty standard from both sides so far. This Reaper is going to show up. Ling's going to pop out. They're going to dance a little bit. And let's see if the Reaper finds any damage. Yellow pulling his drones away already. One drone is going to go down. Oh, no. That's already a good start for the Terran. Might get a Zergling as well. No, maybe not. Does decide against continuing that fight. But one drone. Already an excellent start for B Breed. And just gonna continue with the macro, it looks like. The second command center is done, but not morphing into an orbital just yet. Does instead spend his money on a reactor, another barracks, two Hellions. And does now finally start that orbital. And third command center in the front. As part of the wall, uh, six slow Zerglings make their way in. Uh, speed just finishing up. Yeah, but they do get two SCVs, so that's not bad. Hellions do pop out to push that away, uh, but only two Lings going down in that, so some fairly decent counter damage there from Yellow Jello. And B Breed, I'm just gonna continue working on that orbital. Pokes in with two Hellions and a Reaper. Roast a few Lings, but that's not really enough army to do anything more than that. Um, a fairly decent Queen count. As we're up to, I think, five, if my counting is correct. And now we've got four Hellions and a Reaper. Queens should be just fine against that. And more Queens in production, you love to see it. Back at home, the Terran just uh, working on his macro. Third command center is done. Gonna be morphing that into an orbital. And just doing the same thing. Two barracks. A factory. Uh, factory's gonna be switching over to a tech lab. Most likely for tanks. And Yellow Jello actually going for a bit of aggression. And I'm gonna catch some units out on the map. And oh! Big Widow Mine shot taking out seven uh, Marines. Uh, sorry. Seven Zerglings there. And keeps that Widow Mine alive, actually. Does delay B Breed's push a little bit, but Yellow Gel did invest a lot into those Zerglings. It does have more on the way and a decent queen count over here. Don't want to lose them, though. Hello. Okay, one queen getting very low, but does get transfused up. Now, where are those Zerglings? Uh-oh. few queens going to be going down, but this is the power of queens. You use them to fight, they buy time, they can soak up a lot of damage, they transfuse. So only one queen going down there, and that's pretty decent for Yellow Jello. Um, 
Bee Breed once again standing on creep, so Yellow Gel sees this, and honestly, I think he can just pounce on this. And he is gonna pounce on those few Marines that got a little bit ahead of themselves. Could have potentially gotten the rest of the army, but that's not too shabby. And now, Yellow Gel gonna switch back into droning, eight more in production. Got 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way, going for both attack upgrades, curiously enough. No uh, Hydras on the field just yet. And yeah, I don't really like going for double attack. If you're going for a primarily Ling Bane army, uh, especially against Bio. Now, if it's against Mech, Yes, sure, go for double attack, uh, but against Bee Breed, I don't think that's really the optimal upgrade path. And oh no, no Baneling speed! None in production either, that's a big mistake out of Yellow Gel. He's typically very good with that, but look at these slow Banelings kind of just waddling. Kind of look like Corgis when they walk, you know, their, their butts kind of shaking. I don't know, uh, but Bee Breed continuing his attack now inching forward with the siege tanks and that's gonna be very difficult for yellow jello to break this and this positioning from the siege tank very annoying kind of tucked away here third siege tank joining the fray as well wouldn't mind seeing that in this little pocket um let's see how he decides to do this Yellow Jello. Does he have vision of this? Yeah, that creep tumor did spot that and oh, exactly what I was talking about. Another super annoying position. Yellow Jello, he's got a fairly decent supply, but I don't know about this fight. And oh no, but what are you doing? Oh my god. Yellow Jello just walking his units into their death once again. Oh. And we are going to have to see a GG any second now. What, what, what was that? They just kind of marched into a line over there, losing all the Banelings and most of the Hydras. Third base gonna go down, and Yellow Jello gonna fall 4-0 in this series. Oh my goodness! What a brutal attack once again by Bee Breed. Banelings still do not have speed. And these siege tanks just so powerful, dishing out so much splash damage. 10 kills on that bad boy, 10 on that one, 9 on that one, and this guy 1 HP with 12 kills. Oh my goodness. The bio forces just gonna press forward. There is nothing for the Zerg. He's going for a counterattack, and that's gonna get a little bit of damage, but back at home, he is getting murdered. The supply plummeting for the Zerg. 60 to 120. And we should be seeing a GG imminently. There it goes.
What's up, folks? We are back in game number five of this. I guess it's a best of nine now. Series between the Teal Terror B breed and his Red Zerg opponent, Yellow Jello. I feel like it's gonna be around this stage in the series where B breed decides to go for something cheeky uh, maybe like a banshee opening or a BC opening because the standard has just been steamrolling his opponent so far uh, so might as well get a little cute get a little get a little uh, cheeky we'll see if he decides to do that a yellow jello uh, does want to at least take a game for his uh, morale for his uh, for his mental sanity uh, he's, he's gonna need to show us a little bit better play his, his control always been his downfall and yeah he's just been losing every game so far mostly because of that poor control and we do know if he's able to survive if he's able to uh, get to a strong lurker count maybe like four or five bases then yeah sure he stands a pretty good chance against anyone uh, but the early game aggression from B breed just way too powerful and yellow and gel just Herp derping his units into their deaths. We'll see what these guys have in store for us this time around. Looks like so far it's going to be the same opening for B breed. Yellow Jello with a hatchery first. Got Ling speed on the way. Two Lings on the way. Uh, this Reaper wanted to take out that overlord until it, remind, it remembered he can't shoot up uh, so yeah, this, this overlord actually not not dead center so B breed can spot that he's gonna lift up that factory to ensure uh, that he retains a vision of it and yeah even if you're dead center now that Factory can still spot you, so maybe try to run over here. And Yellow Jello is still trying to perch onto this spot, but the factory is gonna put a wrench into those plans. So instead, just gonna float on into the natural. Confirms that that's in production. I think it could have been safe over here, but Overlord gonna go down. Or Zerglings, not sure what they're doing. Uh, but Vibri not paying attention doesn't lose that Reaper. Uh, ends up wait <laughs> overlord not even dead the marines uh, do finish that off though and zergling's just gonna be a little bit annoying this time he does pull back before losing anyone third hatchery on the way for the zerg no third cc yet we do typically see that by now out of Bee breed. Maybe he has gone for something a little bit cheeky, as we do see a second factory in the main. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a deviation. Is it going to be a Hellion Cyclone composition? I do know that's a fairly strong unit composition and super annoying. Yellow Jello going to be. Uh, going for that Baneling Nest, double Evo on the way. Third Hatchery is up, not quite running just yet, but we have nine drones in production. And I don't really know about these rallies for Yellow Jello. It's another oddity of his. Play. Like, why was a drone spawning out of the third going all the way into the main? That makes zero sense. Now everything is rallied to the third anyways. Uh, 
And now... Looks like the drones aren't going to the third, so... I don't know what's going on with the, that drone rally. Um, but... Plus one, Carabase on the way. Plus one melee, a little bit behind. Double layer! Okay, it does cancel the second one. I thought we were going to see something absolutely bonkers. There's no reason to get double layer unless you just want a little bit more HP on those buildings, but you should not be doing that. And B-Breed just going for a Hellion Cyclone so far. No third CC. Uh, Blue Flame finishing on up, and here he goes. It's a lot of Hellions. Two Cyclones, and a handful of Marines as well. And these Zerglings, they're going to get absolutely melted. He does run away in time to save most of them. But there's a lot of Terran over here, and these Zerg units not optimal in fighting this. Zergling's gonna buy time for the Banelings to finish up, but what are you gonna do with just these slow Banelings? I think the Terran can just kite this all day long. Even doing a little bit of cute splitting there. More Zergling spawning, and that's gonna help a bit. And B Breed. Respecting his opponent right now, not continuing forward just yet. We're gonna be focusing on getting a few more factories. Still no third CC. And another queen going down, but oh! The sandwich! Bailings get an okay connection, uh, but the Hellion Cyclone forces are able to wiggle out the side there. Oh no! A couple wayward Hellions. They don't get caught, but almost did. And so far, Yellow Jello defending fairly decently. Uh, still a good amount of Hellions here. But Hellions are light units, so they do take bonus damage from the Banelings, should the Banelings find the connection. Now B Breed getting that... What is this called? The Mag Field Accelerator, I think? which allows the Cyclones to do bonus damage versus everything. Before the most recent patch, Cyclones did bonus damage versus Armored. Now they don't. But in exchange, they do a little bit more damage versus everything else. Uh, now Hel Yellow Jello going for a big old counterattack does get spotted by the um, units moving out, so B-Breed is able to close up his wall. Third gonna have to be cancelled. And here comes the Hellion Cyclone to defend. And how is the control for either player? It's all gonna come down to these Banelings. And it looks like a lot of them are gonna get cleaned up on the retreat there. Some Zerglings uh, trying to pick a fight against Blue Flame Hellions. Not ideal. Follow up gonna be a Spire from Yellow Jello. Spire can certainly be very good considering the lack of anti air uh, for the Terran. All the Banelings have gone down and oh no! Does have to cancel all those Banelings in production and this Terran force just pressing forward into the natural of the Zerg. Banelings still very far from completion, and I don't know if any of them are going to complete. It looks like the target fire suboptimal, and oh! Finishing just in the nick of the time, getting a decent connection, but there's still a lot of Terran alive and kicking. And now a lot of drones going to be going down, some Zerglings popping out, but is that going to be enough for all these Blue Flame Hellions? It looks like with the Queen support. Just barely, yes, 14 drones do go down amidst all that, but Yellow Gel, he's got four hatcheries. He's got um, an eight worker lead, and B-Breed still no third. Gonna be trying to drop that down, but that SCV can't get there because the wall is closed, so things finally look like uh, they're gonna be decent for Yellow Jellos. He's got 15 mutas on the way 
plus one flyer on the way as well. And the anti-air for BB just going to be a handful of Cyclones, seven of them. And, of course, a few Marines. I don't know if that's really going to be enough. He does spot those Mutas, and he just decides to go for an attack. It's going to catch a few of the rallying Mutas, so that's nice. Uh, but there is still a lot of Mutas over here. And can the Terran defend against this? Looks like the third base is going to have to be... Maybe no, not cancelled. The Mutas just flying around, being super annoying, picking off SCVs here and there. Some supply depots, maybe. Oh, Hellion. And Bibri just struggling to defend against this. The Mutas can bounce every which way, uh, but the ground forces of the Terran, they do have to slowly drive. Um, some Zerglings running into their deaths there. And, ooh, a few Mutas do go down a little bit. A poor control there from Yellow Jello. Uh, but he is in an okay spot. It looks like we might see this go into a later game. Only six Mutas remaining. That's not too scary. It's still enough to be annoying, of course. And oh, might get a few more SCVs here once again, delaying that third command center. The Cyclones do get a lock on, and a few more Mutas do go down. All of them go down. Yellow Gel not evacuating them in time. So, uh, despite all that, Yellow Gel actually behind in supply. However, Ling Bane. Pretty good against this army composition. It's all going to come down to the control, and we do know that is often Yellow Jello's downfall. Squeezing in through that choke, and oh my god, that Widow Mine, an absolute stud over there, getting 23 kills. Many of those were Banelings. And Bibri does get pushed back for now. I'm not sure what the Hellion was doing over there, uh, but. Wow, that Widow Mine connection about as good as it gets. Overlord decides it does not want to serve its master any longer, flies into the missile turret instead. And Yellow Gel maybe setting up a bit of a counterattack here. Ooh, morphing in a lot of Banelings. And yeah, if he can catch. Bee breed while this Terran force is across the map, then all these SCVs essentially forfeit. Uh, but let's see if he can hit that timing. This Chad Widowmine still alive. And oh, might get another juicy connection. Oh my god. Oh, another 10, I think, uh, Banelings going down there. And you do have the Overseer, Yellow Jello. You can clean that up at least. And, oh, I missed that, but 24 SCVs going down to that previous Baneling run by. Excellently done there. And that's going to drop Bibri down to only 30 workers. And he does morph most of his Hellions into Hellbats. Uh, I, I don't know about this, because Hellions are faster. Uh, they can dodge the Banelings. Hellbats can't really. Helmets, of course, are a bit tankier in general, and they do a better job against straight Zerglings, um, but the Banelings are going to be the major issue here. And yeah, those uh, fiery guys, mostly all, all gone. Uh, just a few Hellions left. They're the ones that didn't turn into Hellbats, uh, so things Starting to look good for Yellow Jello, who is on Hive Tech, is getting pathogen glands just completing actually. So the fungal growths to lock down this mobile army could just seal the deal for this game. We also have the Ultralisk Cavern. Uh, should he decide to switch into those later on? Now, Bee Breed. 
Going for the attack once again. Yellow Joe splitting off a lot of his army over here to go for the counterattack. Now, still a lot of Banelings on the defense. These Zerglings going for a big run by, and they're going to kill so many additional SCVs. Uh, I think I saw a Baneling run into a missile turret there, but so many SCVs going down. That means B Breed is essentially all in at this point. Just Cyclones left, and is not too scary. The front door is open as well, so Yellow Jello gonna run on in, and GG's gonna have to be called Yellow Jello. Does not fall 5-0.